All right, all this page is talking about here is uh, that a scale factor with perimeter is just the same as if it were uh, for side lengths, okay? So it's just the same scale factor as you'd usually see it. The difference is when we talk now about area right here, <clears throat> that the scale factor is going to be squared. So you're just going to take the scale factor and multiply it by itself for area, and that'll give you the area of the image. So, for example, let's say that uh, I have this rectangle, and then I have this image rectangle. So I'm going from this one to this one. And let's say that I have the side length of 3, and this corresponding side length right here, and say that it's 12. Okay. Well, what's the scale factor? The scale factor here is 4. Okay, because 3 times the 4 would equal the 12. <clears throat> so let's say that we knew the perimeter by chance of this one. Let's say that it was 10. Well, what would be the perimeter of this other rectangle, this image after it's been dilated by a scale factor of 4. Uh, you're just going to take the 10, multiply it by the scale factor 4, that'll give you this new perimeter of 40. <clears throat> well, what about the area? Well, let's say, for example, that the area of this small rectangle is 6. All right? Well, if this area is 6, then what's the area of this image? Well, remember, for area, it's a little bit different. You're going to take this 6. You're going to multiply it by the scale factor, k, which in this case is 4. But you have to multiply it by the scale factor times itself. So it's the scale factor squared. And that gives you 6 times 4 times 4. And that's our new area, all right? And this new area here is going to be 96 units squared. Okay. So once again, it's just a matter of having the scale factor of 4. We found that the scale factor was 4. Uh, we did that because we have these two corresponding side lengths. 3 times 4 is 12. And we're using the same, same scale factor with the perimeter. 10 times 4 is 40. The area, however, is different. It's the scale factor times the scale factor. And then it's just multiplied by the area of the pre-image. That will give us the area of the image. Let's look at this example. Here it gives us the length of one of the sides of a rectangle. It gives us the length of uh, another rectangle. Okay. So in other words, this length would be 6 inches. And this length here would be 7 inches. And this one has a perimeter of 24 inches. All we want to do on this one is find the perimeter of this other one. Well, if I'm going, since I'm going in this direction, I need 6 times some number will give me 7. Well, that's going to be 7, 6, which if you make a decimal is going to be something awful like uh, 1.16 repeating. Okay, so keep this as a fraction. It will give you a much more accurate result. Okay. How did I do that? Well, let's look. 6 times the scale factor will be 7. This is just the final step in the switch and state game. You're going to divide 7 by the coefficient 6. That'll give you a scale factor 7, 6. And you're going to multiply this by the perimeter because for the perimeter it doesn't change. Times 7, 6. This will give you a nice even number. It's a whole number. It's going to be 28 inches. Alright, so again, all I did here is I took 24 inches times the 7, 6, which is scale factor 
That gives me 28 inches. All right, so this example is exactly the same. So we got to look and see how do we get from 12 to 30. There's actually another way that we can do this, okay? And let's look at that, that method. So all I'm going to do is put lines between these and make them equal, okay? This is going to give me a proportion because the perimeters are on top and the lengths of the legs, or in this case, just one of the sides of a triangle, are on the bottom, okay? So corresponding parts are on the same parts of the fractions in the denominator and numerator. And from here, all I need to do to solve this is I'll start with uh, the part I don't know, and I'll go straight down to 12. So I have 12. The next part is to multiply. Then we'll divide, and that will equal the missing value. So I've just got to fill in these values, see? I'm going to cross up here to 85. That's the next value. I'll come down to 30. And I'll bring this back up to the unknown value. We could say it's x <clears throat> and solve. I can put this directly into a calculator and it'll give me the answer. And some of you remember that this is called the Fishy method, right? So I've used the Fishy method now to solve this. And uh, well, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and solve it. All right. So I'm gonna take this number here, and we're gonna multiply, and then we're gonna divide. And so, what do we get? And it looks like this perimeter here is just going to be 34 miles. All right, so in this one, it's going to give us a couple values as well. And it doesn't tell us out here, but the perimeter of LMN, it says right there, is 64 meters. Okay, I'm just looking right here. It says that they're similar, so we can make a couple assumptions, and that is that the angles are congruent and the side lengths are proportional, okay? So from here, notice it only gave me one value, but not only that, but LM and PQ are corresponding parts, okay? So these two side lengths are corresponding. And finding uh, solving a proportion is much easier for me, so I'm just going to make these two fraction lines. I'll give myself an equal sign, and I need the perimeter on this one, okay? Now, notice in the last example, the perimeter was in the numerator. In this example, the perimeter, the perimeter is in the denominator. And that's not going to make a big difference, all right? Uh, once again, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to divide. That will equal my x value, all right? So from here, let's go ahead and do the fishy method. I'm going to start with the x. I'll go up to 18. It's my first number. I'm going to cross down here to 64. And some of you guys may have learned this in a different way, and it doesn't matter which way you do it, okay? And this next one, I was a 24. And that should equal my x. Okay, so you can see the fish. I'm just going to plug that into a calculator because that's the easiest way. And I've shown my work right there. And as it turns out, x here is going to equal 48 meters. All right, so in this example, the same thing is going to work for us, all right? So I got 24 inches is the side length AB. But we also know we have the perimeter of 64 inches uh, because it told me so right here. Now, the actual length of AB is 18 feet. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this into a proportion, and I'll solve for x right here, because I don't know the perimeter of the other triangle, and since I've already got perimeter here in the denominator, 
the perimeter of this other triangle must also be in the denominator, okay? And yes, this is still 24 inches, okay? I'm just going to use the same method. I'm just going to use a fishy method, and that will give me my answer. So let's go ahead and look at this. I'm going to multiply, we'll divide, and that should equal. Started with 18, went down to 64, across, went up to 24, and that will give me my x value. So go ahead and put that in your calculator, see what you get. And yes, it looks like this one, the x value is also going to be 48. But this time, remember that the 18 was done in feet. So I'll label it in feet. I'll circle my answer, and there we go. All right, so for your birthday, you make a map to your house on a 3-inch wide by a 5-inch long index card. Now, if it does help you, go ahead and draw a picture of this. Okay, so I'll have a 3-inch by 5-inch index card. And the area of the map that we want uh, to use uh, looks like looks like this map is going to be bigger. But the length, which is corresponding with this 5-inch side length, here on the map is now going to be 8 inches. And it tells us that it wants us to find the perimeter. So it didn't even give us the perimeter of this smaller rectangle, which would be the index card. But that can be easily found because opposite sides are the same length. I just need to add all these together. So you can put this in your calculator. Maybe you can do it in your head, whatever the case may be. Still need to show work. 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3. That will give me 16 inches for my perimeter of this index card. Well, since this 8 and the 5, we, we do need to find out the scale factor so that we know what to multiply the perimeter by. All right, so to do that, okay, we're just gonna take our image value and divide it by our pre-image value, that's our scale factor. So we know now that the scale factor, K, is 8 fifths. Okay, again, once, once again, I'm just taking this eight, which is our image value, and dividing it by its corresponding pre-image value. From here, all I need to do is multiply 16 by 8 fifths. So, I'll show that times 8 fifths. And that will give me the perimeter over here of this map. So, 16 times 8 fifths. Go and put that in your calculator. And since we're talking about length, I am going to use a decimal since it came out pretty neat anyways, 25.6 inches. That is the perimeter of this map. Now if we wanted to, and we're not going to, but if we wanted to, we could find the length of this side. Uh, and there's a couple ways that we could do that, uh, but uh, you could. All right, so on this one, we just need to find the perimeter of this big, this one right here, this big square. And it tells us the scale factor. The scale factor here is 3 halves. But it also told us the length of this side of the square. Well, the unique thing about squares is that all the side lengths are the same, so this one going to have a perimeter of 16 inches because these side lengths would be 4 inches as well. Okay? Same with this one. Well, now that we have the perimeter, all we need to do is take the perimeter of the smaller one, multiply it by a scale factor of 3 halves, and that'll tell us the perimeter of this green quilting square. And that looks like it's going to be 24 inches. Okay, so the perimeter of this square is 24 inches. All 
All right, so this is one of those area questions, but we need to pay close attention to the wording of this one, otherwise we'll be tricked. A company wants to reduce the dimensions of its logo by one-fourth. Bam. Found our scale factor. One-fourth. To use on business cards. If the area of the original logo is four square inches, what is the area of the logo that will be used on the business cards? Well, what we need from this is to find out what K squared is. So I'm going to take one-fourth and multiply it by one-fourth. This will give me one-sixteenth, which is my area scale factor. From here, all I do need to do is take the original logo, four square inches, and multiply it by my area scale factor of one-sixteenth. And it looks like this is going to be the area of the new business card. And that'll be one fourth. This is in inches squared. Okay, so be careful with this area scale factor stuff. Okay, so I could have done it the way that I did that other example where I could have done four times one fourth, which is the scale factor. But I would have to multiply it by the scale factor again, and that would give me the same answer up here. Okay? Yeah, there's a lot of fours there, so don't get confused that the answer, one-fourth square inches, uh, it's the same number, one-fourth, as the scale factor, but we figured out that that is the area. And you can put this, you can put this stuff into your calculator to give you the same thing. All right, so this is another example where it's not going to tell us exactly what the scale factor is uh, explicitly, but it is going to tell us what it is in the words. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this problem. Malia is painting a mural on her bedroom wall. The image she is reproducing is 4.8 inches by 7.2 inches. So let's go ahead and draw a picture of the wall, okay? So... We have, uh, I'm sorry, this is the image, rather. And it tells us that this is 4.8 inches by 7.2 inches. Okay? If the dimensions of the mural are 10 times the dimensions of the image, okay, in other words, the scale factor here is 10. Find the area of the mural in square inches. Well... Uh, both of the values it gave us were in inches, so finding the area of this thing is going to be simple. All I'm going to do is take 7.2 times 4.8. Go and put that in your calculators right now. And you can see the answer to that, the area of this rectangle, which is the image, is 34.56 square inches. All right. So what's the area of the mural going to be? Well, to find the area of the mural, what we need to do is take the area of this image, 34.56, and I'm going to multiply that by the scale factor, 10. But this is area scale factor that we need. So I've got to multiply it by 10 again. That will give me my new area, which in this case is 3,456 square inches. And this is the area of the mural. Once again, you can do all of this in your calculator. It's very easy. Showing your work is also very easy. Notice there's not really that much work that I've done taken the area and multiplied it by 10 twice. And also I've taken the length and the width and multiplied it by them, multiplied them together to get this 34.56 square inches. All right, let's go ahead and look at this graphic organizer, okay? This table. So notice in this column here, all it's talking about is the scale factors. 
if I have this scale factor, how will I multiply the length, or what will I multiply the length by and the width to find their new values? What would I multiply the perimeter by to find a new value or a scaled image? And then the area. Okay, so remember there's a huge difference between these, uh, between area and the other three. So I'm going to separate these just so we can see that there is a difference between these three values and then this area value, okay? So if my scale factor is 2, I'm going to multiply the length by 2. If my scale factor is 2, then I'll multiply the width by 2. If my scale factor is 2, I'll multiply the perimeter by 2. And you're seeing the pattern here. If I have a scale factor of 2, I'll multiply the area by 4. Yes, this is not the same, okay? The area scale factor is going to take the regular scale factor, 2, and multiply it by itself, 2. It's going to be 4. Well, that should make the uh, filling out the rest of this pretty easy. These ones are all the same. But the area is different. So I'm just going to take 4 times 4 for the area scale factor, which would give me 16 here. This one as a decimal is going to be 0.25, because I got 0.5 times 0.5. If I were to s square this 2 thirds, I'd have to square the numerator. 2 times 2 is 4. And also, the denominator, 3 times 3 is 9. And then squaring k is very simple. It's just k squared.